Now that we've designed one card and its associated card view, the next step is to build a stack of those cards to represent the thing our user is trying to learn. Now this stack will change as the app is used. The user is going to be able to remove cards over time. So we're going to mark this thing with at state. Now right now we have no way of adding cards. So we'll add a stack of 10 using our example card. Swift arrays have a helpful initializer built in called init repeating count, which takes one value and repeats a number of times to create the array. In our case, we can use that with our example card to create a simple test array. So we'll start with a new property here in our content view. We'll say at state private var cards. This is an array of card repeating that example value for the count of 10. Give me 10 example cards here. Now our main content view is going to contain a number of overlapping elements inside stacks. But for now, we're just going to put this into a rough skeleton. Our stack of cards will be placed inside a single Z stack. So we can place them partly overlapped with a neat sort of 3D effect. Around that Z stack will be a V stack. Right now, that V stack won't do much. But later on, it'll allow us to add a timer above our cards. Around that V stack will be another Z stack. So we can place our cards and timer on top of a background. Now, right now, these stacks probably feel like overkill, but it'll make more sense as we progress. The only complex part here of our next code is how we position our cards inside the card stack so they have that slight overlapping. I've said it before, but the best way to write Swift UI code is to carve off any messy calculations to the handles, methods, or modifiers. In this case, we're going to make a new method called stacked that will make a position in the array along the total size of the array and offset a of view by some amount based on those values. This allows us to create an attractive card stack where each card is a little bit further down the screen than the one before it. So we'll add a new extension here in content view to do just that. This will be a new modifier, so an extending view. We'll call this thing stacked at some position integer in a total count of int, and it return some view. Now inside here, we're going to calculate our offset we'll say the offset value oops, is the double of our total card count minus our position. So how far through we are in the deck. We'll then return the current view offset with an X value of zero, but a Y value of offset times 10. So 10 points down, 10 points down, 10 points down again, and again, and again as the position increases further and further and further. So as you can see, we're pushing our views down by 10 points for each place that are in the array. We have zero, the top card, then 10, 20, 30, and so on. Now with that simple modifier, we can now build a really nice card stack effect using the layout I described earlier. So let's replace this current card view example view here with that triple stack. So we've got a Z stack on the outside, then a V stack, then inside there, another Z stack. This is our cards. This is the timer next to the cards above it. And then this outer one, let's just place that whole thing over a background image. Inside the innermost Z stack here, this one, we're gonna count for each zero to cards.count with ID of backslash.self. Give you the index coming in. And then inside there, we'll draw a card view. And the card will pass in is whatever's in our cards array at that index. This is where offset comes in. I'm gonna tell this thing to be stacked at our index in the array of cards.count. Like that. Now, let's run this back. Press Command R now. See how it looks like. You should be able to see the shadow effect building up. Boom, there we go. So you get a real thick shadow because Many cards are now overlapping again and again and again. As the card depth increases, the shadow increases here, and it's very, very stark against this white background. But if we have a background picture, you'll see it looks better. 
Now in the GitHub files for this project, again, github.com slash two straw slash hacking with Swift, you're gonna find two files. I have them here already. Background at 2x and background at 3x. These are the pictures here. Those are what we're gonna put behind our cards. So go ahead and open up asset catalog here and just drag these two files. Oh, hello, other dog. Drag these two files into asset catalog and they'll be added here neatly. And now we can add an image in our content view. So inside the initial Z stack, this is just here, before the V stack, so right here, we're gonna place that new image. We'll say image dot background is resizable and ignores the safe area. It goes edge to edge in all dimensions. Like that. Come on. Let's press Command R again and see how it looks now. That background shadow is obviously much less stark now. So we've got a slightly darker background, but it makes the whole thing look a lot better.